for you. Hello and welcome to the video. Within this video I'm going to be testing and comparing a wide range of gravity measuring products with exactly the same wall to see how they compare in terms of readings and accuracy. I will be sharing the whole method so that if you wish to you can follow with the same test at home yourself. So let's get started. My method in preparing this test is to brew a quick wort using my test batch brew in a bag setup. As you can see I have planned this in brew father as an 8 litre or 2.11 US liquid gallons end volume brew. The grain used here is 2 kilos or 4.4 pounds of pad ale malt. Brew father reports this as an estimated OG of 1.053 but let's see how far this can be taken. Naturally this figure is based on the estimated gravity figures from the maltster, which in this case is Muntons. These figures are going to represent an average rather than anything accurate as such. Ok let's get started with this mini brew. Due to the nature of my small batch setup I have milled this grain very finely as you can see here. My small batch setup for mashing is controlled by an inkbird sous vide unit which has a good level of temperature accuracy. I have had a small amount of people question how efficient such a setup can be. So this is another thing that we will be testing in this video. As always I am stirring the grain well in to ensure that every grain is wet and that there are no clumps. I am mashing this at 65 degrees celsius or 149 degrees fahrenheit and then mashing it out at 75 degrees celsius or 167 degrees fahrenheit. I gave the grain a good stir in for a few minutes three times during mash in. Like any form of brewing this is a very nice way to push efficiency. Once all of the mashing was complete I then moved over to the boil which I did for 30 minutes on my hot plate. No actual hops were added as this is simply a gravity test and after the testing I'm simply going to pour this away. You could conduct this exact same test with just dried malt extract. This would be faster just needing a boil but the test would be more expensive and certainly less fun but it's up to you. I then called the wall down to room temperature which is important considering that some of the instruments I will be testing with are requiring this temperature range. If you are curious about my small batch setup and want further details then check out the video shown on screen now for more. Let's get the testing started. I began my testing with the Easy Dens because this has the highest level of accuracy of all of these units which is reported by Anton Parler manufacturer to be 0.001 for specific gravity. The unit will also automatically adjust its readings according to temperature, so as such this is our control unit. The Easy Dens doesn't need calibration so it was simply a case of loading in the sample and then firing up the smart app. And now for the moment of truth. Remember that Brewfather predicted an OG of 1.053 based on overall brew house efficiency of 67%. As you can see this figure is 13 points over this prediction meaning that in actual fact I had a brew house efficiency of over 80% and actual mash efficiency of almost 92%. So when people say that brewing a bag is a method of brewing that has bad efficiency they are clearly wrong. For further details about Easy Dens then check out the video now shown on screen that provides I hope everything you would ever want to know. I have done a lot of testing with floating digital hydrometers in the past and they are in and out of accuracy during fermentation but I suspect that they will be much more accurate in a calm wall. So here goes testing with the latest version of the tilt. Before starting this test I wanted to check the calibration of the tilt in distilled water. The hardest part of this was actually getting the tilt to stay still quickly and it circled the container as if it was angry at being imprisoned for quite some time. As it turned out it was still spot on without any need for calibration. Once again there was a little dancing within the wall but the tilt stabilised quite quickly thankfully compared to in the distilled water. Once it did I then picked up the reading and boom it was the same as the Easy Dens. I did have high hopes but I was surprised to see this level of accuracy. The interesting thing here is that when I did my accuracy testing with the previous version of the tilt versus the brew brain float and the ice spindle it came in last place overall. So clearly some extra accuracy has been baked into this latest version. On this basis clearly these floating digital hydrometers can be accurate when they are floating in a calm environment. Here comes the third most expensive device on our list. Before testing with my refractometer I was sure to know that it was recently calibrated. Personally I find it very worthwhile to calibrate these with a control sample of wort, which was done just recently. Naturally this does mean that you will need something very accurate for control like an easy dense. 
If you do not have such a control unit, then check out this guide from Brian at Short Circuited Brewing, who takes you through calibration. It's vital to understand that your refractometer will not be accurate at all without either of these two methods applied. Another vital aspect is to make sure that you keep the screen clean. Before testing with the wart sampler, I used distilled water to clean the lens of the refractometer, just to be sure that it was in the best shape possible. Sadly, I was unable to get a good enough image of the result from the refractometer using various different cameras, so I cannot show you the result, but the end reading was 1.070. So you can see that despite calibrating the refractometer with a controlled sample of wart, this was still not accurate. However, like all of these tests from myself and frankly from others, you may find that your experience is different. Certainly it is very useful having a device that can see at least where my wart's gravity is during the brewing process, but sadly this refractometer and previous models that I have owned have simply fallen short. Let's now move on to the cheapest of the instruments being tested. Here I have two standard hydrometers, but from two brands that are well established and respected in the homebrew market. One is from Bevy and the other is from Kegland. These hydrometers certainly look very similar to each other, so I'm going to assume that they are both rebranded, but from the same factory. Naturally you cannot calibrate these as such, but you can give them a spin in distilled water and see how they read once they settle. You are going to be hoping for an SG of 1000, otherwise known as neutral. The Kegelan version is shown on the right here, and the Bevy version is on the left. For this distilled water test I'm using the same trial jar and water, with each allowing them time to settle. Within both of these examples, both hydrometers are very, very similar, and were very close to the desired neutral result, which is a promising sign, of course. For this next test, I'm just showing one of these on screen, because like the first test, they are actually both identical. So if you have a hydrometer that is very similar looking, then perhaps the results will be the same for you too. As you will see as this hydrometer begins to settle is that we have a very similar enough reading to the refractometer shown earlier, showing that these types of hydrometers are not very precise either. Should we be disappointed? I think not, considering how cheap hydrometers are, and the fact that they are only really sold as a guide to gravity rather than anything precise. This will certainly not please everyone though, of course. I suggest that you consider the results in this video and replicate it for your own devices. Clearly the more expensive devices are going to be the most accurate, and do keep in mind that floating digital hydrometers like the Tilt, Brewbrain Throat and Ice Spindle are operating in mostly uncalm wart, which certainly does skew their readings during this time. The most precise times are before fermentation and after fermentation. There is also the problem of and interference to bear in mind too. Should the and stick and dry on the top of the device, then this will certainly skew the readings until it is cleaned off. Clearly the Easy Dens is the top of its game, and I dare say that over a period of different tests that it would prove to be more accurate than any floating digital hydrometer, but this naturally comes at a much higher premium. Yes, the refractometer and hydrometer readings were not accurate, but ultimately you need to decide for yourself just how accurate you need your readings to be. Does it really matter if you are four or so gravity points away? Well, only you can decide. I do hope that you found this video useful, informative and interesting. If so, why not consider liking and subscribing? For further support you can join the channel's Facebook group, and if you would like to support the channel then check out the channel's merchandise store, as all profits go back into the channel. Until next time, happy brewing!